Imagine learning about maltreatment of black male slaves by white women, the kind of secrets that would make your blood run cold. You can expect it today when it comes to white women abusing black male slaves. Our first tale concerns Marie LaLaurie, a socialite who appeared elegant but actually had a sinister side. You won't believe the lengths she went to in order to torture and murder black male slaves, her cold sadism knew no limitations in that regard. The secretive relationships between white women and black male slaves will then be revealed, along with their passion and forbidden love. The startling and gruesome consequences of these unions, as well as the intricate web of deceit, treachery, and unfathomable decisions these women had to make, will leave you in awe. Are you prepared to gaze into the depths of history? This is not a task for the timid. Click the like button and subscribe buttons to receive more content that dared to go where few others had gone. Marie Delphine McCarty Delphine McCarty was born to a wealthy family in New Orleans on March 19, 1787. Her father, Louis Barthélemy de McCarty, was knighted as a Chevalier of the Royal and Military Order of St. Louis, and the majority of the McCarty males had served in the military. By 1794, her family owned a 1,344-acre estate between Independence and Bartholomew, close to the infamously wealthy Count Pierre-Philippe Mandeville de Marguerite. It is safe to assume that during the time of slavery, she led a beautiful existence. There were rich families who received slaves as inheritance in the United States. From the 17th to the 19th century, slavery was a deeply rooted institution in many southern states, and it was backed and legalized by the government. As a result, slave ownership played a vital role in the economics and society of the antebellum South. Slaves were frequently passed down through marriage into other wealthy households or as inheritances from wealthy families to wealthy ones. Since slaves were used for labor-intensive jobs on plantations or in households, they were seen as property and passed down as a family's riches from one generation to the next. These households saw slave ownership as a way to retain their economic standing. Madame Delphine LaLaurie In the early 1830s, Madame Delphine LaLaurie, hiding behind the persona of a renowned member of society, turned her New Orleans mansion into a chamber of horrific horrors. When a fire broke out in 1834, neighbors learned the horrifying truth about the mansion's interior. She treated her enslaved laborious to horrible acts of torture and death. They came across slaves who had been severely mutilated, some of whom were barely holding on to life, while others had been allowed to rot. The horrifying details, gouged eyes, flayed skin, and mouths full of feces, showed the extent of Madame LaLaurie's sadistic tendencies. Her horrifying deeds permanently damaged her standing as one of history's most cruel ladies. As the neighbors rushed to help after a fire destroyed Madame Delphine LaLaurie's New Orleans mansion in 1834, they noticed that she appeared to be alone in the building and became concerned about the absence of her slaves. They decided to look into it, but what they discovered inside the mansion was horrifying. When the enslaved employees arrived at the location, they were found to be undergoing unspeakable agony and misery. Some of them had been cruelly dismembered but were still alive, while others had tragically passed away and been left to decay. The dark and sinister secrets concealed in Madame LaLaurie's home had unintentionally been made public by the fire. Madame Delphine LaLaurie's reputation as a ruthless and vicious person was cemented by the attic stories that circulated. In the attic of her New Orleans mansion, there were dead remains and a staggering total of over 100 victims, according to whispers. These chilling tales gave readers a chilling image of the degree of Madame LaLaurie's cruelty, and the mere hint of such horrifying crimes against humanity sent shockwaves through the neighborhood, further solidifying her reputation as a personification of sadism and malice. The attic was permanently associated with horrible horrors, leaving Madame LaLaurie's name behind. Before engaging in sadistic behavior, Madame Delphine LaLaurie had a reputation as a respected member of society who appeared to lead a life of relative normalcy. She had married multiple times and had children while putting on the appearance of a normal life, after being born into a wealthy white Creole family in New Orleans. The devastating findings of Madame LaLaurie's harsh treatment of enslaved people destroyed the facade and revealed the darkness she harbored, despite her well-established social stature. Her public persona and her heinous deeds are contrasted by the stark outfit, highlighting the depths of her ability for unimaginable violence when she is alone. 
One particularly troubling example of Madame Delphine LaLaurie's awful exploitation of her slaves was the 70-year-old chef that she callously shackled to the stove, sentencing them to a life of confinement and starvation and displaying the true extent of her sadism. Such horrifying treatment provided a glimpse into the shadowy reality that existed within the walls of Madame LaLaurie's mansion, where human lives were reduced to objects of torment and suffering at the hands of a merciless and remorseless tormentor. This cruel act demonstrated Madame LaLaurie's complete disregard for the dignity and humanity of those in her possession. The haunted house where Madame Delphine LaLaurie committed her gruesome atrocities still stands as a chilling reminder of the horrors that unfolded within its walls that were horrific. Sexual relations. Turning the tables, we will now discuss the sexual relationships between elite white women and enslaved men. Although it wasn't unheard of for white women to have sex with black male slaves during the time when slavery was practiced in the United States, these occurrences pale in comparison to the widespread sexual exploitation of black female slaves by white men. Some of these relationships were voluntarily formed, while others were the result of prejudice and rigid racial hierarchies being implemented. Partnerships like this were punishable severely under the laws and conventions of the time. There may have been more than one reason why some white women had relationships with African male slaves. These reasons can range from simple to complex, the following are some of the possibilities. When such relationships did occur, it was customary to keep them hidden out of fear of social rejection and legal repercussions. Some white women may have developed genuine affection and emotional bonds with black slaves especially those they were in intimate touch with, like housemaids, this may have happened as a result of the two groups' closeness. During this time, having a romantic relationship with a black slave would have been seen as a rejection of the stringent cultural constraints and limitations placed on women. It's likely that some of the relationships that have been built developed in part due to the powerful force of sexual attraction. Covering up pregnancies, due to the significant social shame and legal ramifications, it was occasionally necessary to take extreme measures to conceal pregnancies and births originating from these relationships. Here are several instances where abandonment or infanticide may have taken place. To conceal the relationship's proof, the neonates in some circumstances were abandoned or even killed. Secret adoptions, babies could be given away secretly to other families or individuals to be raised as their own. If the child could pass as white they might be kept enraged as part of the white family with the parentage kept a secret. So what do you guys think, we eagerly want to know about your point of view, do let us know in the comments below. Subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this.